Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Dr. Claudia Elbers. No, not Dr. Piltia Elpers. I've decided to disagree with Google and trust my lying brain. I am Dr. Claudia Elbers. Yeah, that's what I just said. Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one's entitled, The Jet Engine is an Anti-Gravity Engine. It uses air as fuel. Yep, I did not realize that Dr. Claudia Elbers here had a video about the jet fuel hoax. A lot of you will remember that I made a video, actually a two-part video about that quite a while ago, and I kind of thought that was it for that, but apparently this is more widespread than I thought. Now, I have recently watched several videos where I noticed that the slow speed at which turbines within jet engines turn, and the ease with which planes get into the air. Slow speed? They run at like tens of thousands of RPM. So what could you be talking about here? Well, you say you watched a video, and that immediately gets me concerned because, well, let's face it, a lot of the conspiracy theories that come out of your corner of YouTube basically revolve around not knowing how cameras work. So let's go watch a video of a jet turbine starting up and running, and we'll see how slow it actually goes. So here's a video with a million views. You probably watched this one. Maybe other ones too, but probably this one. I've also seen this one before during my work on the last jet fuel video. So at first we can see it's totally stationary. It starts going real slow. Slow, real slow, a little bit faster. At that point, it looks like it stops just briefly. Now, why do you think it does that? It starts speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, and then it stops. Or at least superficially, it kind of looks like it stops. This is a really important question. This is going to determine how we interpret the rest of this video. Now, the question, Claudia, is did it actually stop? Was it actually standing still? Well, you can see that it didn't actually stop. The brightness of the blades was changing. The blades were clearly moving. While it was stopped, each individual blade that you saw was actually multiple different blades being swapped out with each other. Very strange thing to happen in real life. It would be kind of concerning. Fortunately, this isn't real life. This is a video. And videos have frame rates in frames per second. The fan there also has something like a frame rate. Revolutions per second. So I don't know what the frame rate is there, let's say 30. The camera is taking 30 different images every second. So what happens if, say, for a full second, for 30 pictures, that fan is turning at such a speed that at any given point, each one of those fan blades is in the same place that it was in the previous picture? The answer is obviously that it's not going to look like it's turning at all, because the fan blade is in the same place as it was before. If it's not in exactly the same place, but it's pretty close, it'll look like it's barely moving. And now what if instead of the same fan blade being in the same place in every picture for a second, in every one of those pictures a different fan blade is in the same place. Well, the structure is still not going to look like it's moving, but because in each frame you have a different fan blade in any given position, and each individual blade has a slightly different coloration, a slightly different amount of wear or dirt on it or whatever, it's going to look like the fan blades are changing brightness, which is exactly what we see. So just to be absolutely clear with you, professional physicist, in case it wasn't clear already, this in no way means that the fan suddenly stops up dead in its tracks for a little while. So now that we understand this process and we understand that cameras can be deceptive in this way, let's move forwards and see what happens as it goes faster. Okay, we can see it picking up speed and it still doesn't look that fast. But given what I've just told you, you should be considering whether the speed that is apparent in the 30 frames per second that you have available in the camera is the actual speed that you would measure in the continuous real world. What I mean is if you had a camera with a billion frames a second, would you still see that appearing slow? Or would you see this thing undergoing many, many, many more revolutions per second than you see it doing in a 30 frames per second camera. So now we see the fan stop, start moving forward pretty quickly, and then reverse direction completely and move backwards until it stops again and starts moving forwards again. And backwards. And forwards. And backwards. And... We pan over to the people who are running the engine. Now, what is the most likely possibility here? That this fan is spinning up, 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 up in speed, and the multiples of its revolutions per second are changing over time relative to the frame rate of the camera, thus making it appear to move at different speeds at different times, like I described before when it stopped. Or that these engines seriously run by spinning up, kind of, and then going backwards, and then going forwards, and then backwards, and forwards, and backwards. Is it more likely that this camera is 
perfectly capturing continuous infinite frames per second reality, or that it's capturing 30 frames per second and a whole bunch of reality is essentially missing in the video. And that you can't accurately determine the RPM of something that's spinning rapidly if you film it at 30 frames a second. Claudia, what is actually more likely in your opinion? Is it that Planet X is deceiving me? Now up until what we've seen so far, I think it's pretty reasonable to say that this fan is turning pretty quickly, more quickly than it appears in the camera. But at that point we were just getting started, so let's skip to the end of the video and see how it looks there. At this point the fan is moving so fast that it's totally irrelevant what the frame rate on the camera is. You're not going to see the thing going forwards or backwards because in any given frame all you see is a blur all the way around. If for some reason you were trying to measure the speed of that fan before, even though you would be doomed to inaccuracy, now you would have no way to even attempt it. All you see is a big black circle. And yet for some reason the assertion is that this fan is running slowly. Well I have to say it doesn't look all that slow, and there's no other reason to think it is, so... Coming back to what I said at the start of this, I really don't know why you think this thing is running slow, unless maybe you just watched this kind of close to the start and you saw that phenomenon where the frame rate doesn't match up to the RPM, and decided that means it's actually slow and the camera's perfectly representing reality to you. It made me wonder how such slow turbine speeds could actually propel an airplane to the correct takeoff speed. Well yeah, if that fan was actually sitting there either not moving or moving backwards half the time, I would have to agree with you. Fortunately though, being a person of the modern world who pays attention to the world, I know at least the very basics of camera functionality. And so, unlike you, I don't have to sit around feeling confused all day. Since I haven't seen any cooling fans showing any signs of producing a propulsive force. Cooling fans producing a propulsive force? Why do they have to be cooling fans? Why can't they just be fans? And they could not have been moving that much slower and being much smaller. You would expect something if all the turbines were doing was pushing air. And there being only the advantage of that air being heated as jet engines are supposed to do. And they could not have been moving that much slower and being much smaller. You would expect something if all the turbines were doing was pushing air. And there being only the advantage of that air being heated as jet engines are supposed to do. Am I just being a dumb brain right now or is that total word salad? So when I came across some information relating to how airplane wings do not actually contain any fuel tanks, I was very interested. Good, that's great. Be interested. I was interested too. Did you think about it? You know, think about the reasoning presented, the evidence presented, whether it added up, whether the math worked. You're a physicist, right? So you must have done that. Jet airplanes are supposed to have huge fuel tanks in their wings, but it seems that there is actually nothing but empty space and hydraulics to control the moving parts on the wings inside those wings. And you can see this is a panel that broke off this airplane wing whilst in flight and where there's supposed to be a fuel tank a whole wing supposed to be filled with a fuel tank. There's nothing but empty space and hydraulics equipment. Wow, that's damning evidence. Except those wing flaps look a little big relative to the wing, don't they? In fact, what is all that gray up in the top left corner of the picture? It almost looks like more wing. Okay, you know what? I have to find the full picture. Oh, here we go. Oh, I see. So the main wing is not affected by this at all. In fact, that means that what you're seeing along the left side of the open cavity is the main wing structure, the place where the fuel actually is. Here's a schematic of a 757 and here is another one. Look at that part of the wings on both of them. What do you see there? Well, what you see is that on this particular aircraft, that exact spot where that panel fell off is just behind the main wing box. There's not supposed to be fuel in there, which would explain why there's not. Fortunately, you have all the rest of the wing, which is perfectly intact, for the fuel to be in. Also, considering that the fuel is stored in the internal structural wing box, it'd be pretty baffling if an outer panel falling off would lead to fuel leaking out. But because you don't behave like a real scientist, Claudia, because you don't investigate anything, because you don't give a hot goddamn if what you spread on the internet and what you personally believe is actually true, you looked at this one picture, made a judgment, and decided that you understand everything about how planes work. I can only assume mostly because it agrees with your preconceptions about there being massive conspiracies everywhere. So that was pointless, tell us about the other one. And you can see a broken airplane wing with, again, no sign of any fuel tank inside it. Really? You're not seeing any sign at all? 
are you feeling all right? Because I see the green wing rib sitting right there. I see the ripped sides of the wing box. Here are some examples of what those look like in production if you need them, but I don't know why you would, Mrs. Physicist. I mean, you'd think before making a video like this, you would have looked up the structure of a wing yourself. Claudia, that green thing is the fuel tank, or at least part of it. You're staring right at it with your eyeballs. You're running your cursor across it while saying at the very same moment that there's no sign of its existence. Notice that the fuel tank would have had to be made of some hardy material able to remain intact at varying pressures. Yeah, aluminum alloys, stainless steel, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff they're made of. Yep. So there's no sign of any such material inside the wings. There's no sign of a material? How can you tell what material it is from the picture? All right, what material is it, Claudia? Then, are you saying this airliner had wings made out of wood? Plastic? Silly putty? What? There's nothing there. There should be some, a huge metallic tank in there. It's not there. You are currently rubbing it with your cursor hand thing. It's a big metal tank. You can fucking see it right there. I mean, is the problem that you don't know that wings have ribs? Is the problem that you don't know that the wing tanks are in sections? Is that the problem? Do you think it has to be one long tank with no separation? Is that... I, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is, but Claudia, it's right there in front of your face. It's... there's nothing to contain anything. <laughs> there's, again, hydraulics there. My guess would be maybe a fuel inlet for the engine or something like that. But yeah, obviously there's more to getting the fuel system working in an airliner than just having a bare fuel tank. You need mechanisms in there to actually move the fuel around where you need it, obviously. So jet airplanes seem to actually run on nothing but air. Compressed, vortexed air. Well, that's interesting. So what's compressing the air? Takes a lot of energy to do that. So what's producing the energy? Which causes lift or anti-gravity. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey, now. Let's not get too carried away on the language here. I mean, yeah, lift is an opposing force and it can bring you away from the Earth faster than gravity can bring you towards it, but it doesn't negate gravity. It doesn't free you from the effects of gravity. Lift pushes up against gravity. That's not what anti-gravity means. And propulsion is invented by the Austrian inventor Victor Schauberger. I'm wondering if I should research the history of the invention of compressed vortexed air propulsion, whatever that's meant to exactly refer to. But I snuck a peek at the rest of the video, and that is not going to be important. The jet engine is an anti-gravity engine. No. See, if you describe lift as anti-gravity, I can at least sort of in some sense see what you're trying to say, as much as I disapprove of the language. But a jet engine is most definitely not anti-gravity. A jet engine doesn't produce lift even. That's not its purpose. A jet engine produces thrust. The wing pulled through the air by that thrust produces lift. Run a jet engine without a wing and it's not going to oppose gravity and float off into space. This means that someone is running a big scam on all the people who being led to believe that their jet airplanes need jet fuel to work and are paying for it. So the assertion is if a jet engine uses compressed vortexed air for propulsion in some way and also is an anti-gravity engine, then that means for some reason that it cannot need fuel to, for example, compress that air, which is exactly what it uses the fuel for, as well as turning the fan, of course. And therefore it's all make-believe to charge you a little bit more for your plane ticket. Geez, you're making me think I should slap one of these on top of my car. That'd save me an awful lot of fuel. But then again, I don't really want my car to float off to the moon or anything. So he, here is Victor Schauberger. And this is Schauberger's impeller engine, which basically uses vortexed air and thus concentrates the air or... Um, vortexes it inwards. Vortexes it inwards into the engine room, which is right in front of the passenger room, which is surrounded by the diving chamber. And for some reason, the air that's coming in is labeled water intake. And on the back is a little rudder that says steering. This is a very strange jet engine. Why do we have passengers riding in the jet engine? Oh, right, because this is a submarine design and you didn't read the words written on it, Claudia. Very professional. And here are jet engines. Look at those stupid jet engines. Where are the passengers supposed to sit? And this turbine actually moves quite slowly. 
I've noticed that in several videos. I'm sure you have. Uh, you know, it's too bad that none of your, what, 15, 1600 scientific articles have been about how cameras work. That might have been useful for you before you started trying to measure the speed of a jet turbine from a 30 frames per second video. That's what I actually noticed, how slowly these turbines actually move. I'm not repeating myself again. Uh, hey everybody, how's your day going? Thanks for showing up, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Can I get you something? A coffee? Pastry? No? All right, well you just let me know. I'll keep going in the meantime. I think they move slower than most fans. Really? Well, that's great, because I just happen to have a fan. I know it's hard to believe, but I have all this kind of sophisticated, expensive equipment. So the real question here to be answered is not really whether the fan on the front of a jet engine moves faster than a fan in my house. The real question is, can I even get an accurate measurement of the speed of the fan in my house, just filming it at normal frame rates? The video we looked at, where that fan seemed to be traveling kind of slowly throughout a lot of it, seems to have just been filmed with a normal camera, so 24 frames a second, 30 frames per second, maybe 60 at the outside. The YouTube video itself was not 60 FPS. FPS, but who knows what they filmed it on. I kinda doubt they took a phantom camera and filmed it at like 128,000 frames a second though. So we'll start at 24 frames per second. So to start with, the fan is stopped. I turn it on to setting 1, the slowest setting. You can see that it seems to be turning decently fast. If I zoom into the letters here, you can see that they're turning around and around and around. Turn it on to setting 2, and if we look at the letters, they appear to be moving backwards, not forwards. Clockwise, from our perspective, is forwards. And then I turn it on to setting 3, and all of a sudden, it's dead slow. In fact, if I look at the letters, you can read them. They're sitting still. They're stretching a bit, they're doing some odd things, but they're basically still and readable. Gotta refocus. I have it set to a really low f-stop just to get more light in, but of course that makes it have a really narrow depth of field, so I have to keep refocusing it whenever I move it. I could use autofocus, but it kind of sucks, at least on this camera. Anyway, now we'll move on to 30 frames per second. It looks pretty different. The level 1 speed is seeming to move backwards at a relatively slow speed. When I switch it to number 2, it briefly seems to stop and then it starts moving forward, and it still looks like it's pretty slow. Interestingly, while the fan blades seem to move clockwise, the letters seem to move counterclockwise. At least it looks that way to me. Here's a bit of a side view just to see how weird this can get. Disconnected hovering fan blades. Now we switch it up to level 3, and unlike at 24 frames a second, it actually seems to move pretty fast. Those letters are going by in a blur, although they're still clearly distinguishable. And then I turn it off, and as it slows down and sinks and desyncs with the frame rate over and over again, it seems to move forward and backwards and stop and all kinds of stuff. And finally, it stops. So you should be getting the idea by now, Claudia. If something's spinning really fast, you should not be trusting the camera to show you absolute reality. 
cameras don't record reality as it is. They represent reality technologically, and that technology has limitations. Just in the same way that your eyes and your brain can produce optical illusions, a camera can produce illusions. So when you're looking at photos or videos, you need to take that into account. If you don't take it into account, if you inherently trust the camera in all things, you're going to end up believing some really stupid things, because you're treating what the camera sees as some kind of perfect record, which it is not. I should also point out that that rolling shutter effect that you see with my fan blades getting smeared out across the screen gets less pronounced with the less of your screen that the thing you're filming takes up. And this is because the capturing of the images is done by scanning across and down. So the start and end of each row of pixels are from slightly different points in time, and the top left and the bottom right corner of the frame are from relatively significantly different points in time. So the point being, different parts of the image record how the object looked at different points in time. And so the less of the screen that the object you're concerned with takes up, the less difference in time the distance from the upper left of it to the bottom right of it represents. And so if I move a good distance back from the fan, it takes up a lot less space on the screen, and you can see that that effect is much less pronounced. So don't be surprised that you don't see too much of it in the jet turbine. Now Schauberger got his ideas from observing nature. He noticed vortices in nature and noticed that birds did not fly. They were flown. In other words, a bird's movements are meant to cause its surroundings to cause it to be lifted or carried. Yeah, that's basically true. And that's the same with airplane wings. A bird's movements are meant to cause its surroundings to cause it to be lifted. Yep. Planes produce forward thrust to draw air over the wings, which are shaped in such a way that they create a pressure differential that pushes the airplane up. So it's not that the wing, the bird wing, plane wing, lifts itself. In a vacuum, it wouldn't work. When it's dragged forward through the air, it moves the air in such a way that it causes the air to lift it. So birds fly as a result of anti-gravity. Why do you keep saying that? Do you think that lift actually, like, eliminates gravity? Birds producing lift are still being pulled down by gravity. I really hope you realize that as a physicist. The gravitational interaction has two parts to it, one attractive and one repulsive. A concentration of gravitational energy at a certain point in the atmosphere creates a repulsive effect so that the matter within, uh, which is where energy is more concentrated in that a space where energy is more concentrated is repelled away from the surface of the Earth, thus creating lift. As sure as I am that you as a physicist know better than every other physicist, can you just maybe produce a little demo machine that uses this effect? You seem to understand the effect well enough, you should at least be able to design it. Maybe you don't know about the electronic parts you might need, I think Donia Daytona was an electrical engineer. And I'm sure there's a fair number of conspiracy theorists, uh, machinists, and engineers, drafters, whatever, on YouTube who could help you out with other parts of the construction. But please, at the end of it, don't just come out with a paper airplane. Because just to be clear, a paper airplane airplane or a bird wing or an airplane wing are not using gravitational repulsion to achieve lift. Anyway, the rest of this is just a bunch of stuff about how uh, water vortices affect gravity and jet engines create vortices and then they turn into anti-gravity machines and um, really all I have to say to it is no. Or if I want to be a little more charitable, I could say prove it. But that's not that interesting of a response, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing it. So I guess that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you like the channel, subscribe. If you really like the channel and you want to see it continue, please consider supporting it on Patreon or Subscribestar, PayPal, any of the other options at support.logic.com. Seven different outlets for people to pour money into him. Seven different outlets outlets. Discord, email list, the usual stuff I say. Have a wonderful day everyone, and that includes you too, Claudia, and I'll be back soon.